industrialists, very wealthy people. Mm-hmm. But they, they, my father, they, he was also born in Mumbai. His father was also born in Mumbai. We had big foundries and all that. The Vecha, first Shivdas. So it was, I mean, uh, but they, they were living uh, very wealthy people in their own huge bungalows and all that. And my mother's family are Jain. It was in those days, it was a love marriage. And they are absolute strict Jains. And my mother had lost her father, but they, that is also a very wealthy family. And they were they were absolutely business people. Mine were industrialists. And then of course I lost my father when I was very young and all that. So I was brought up in my mother's mother's house, maternal uncle's house. And they're also very artistic family, very very artistic, what? loving arts and all that. My husband was le- my mama, that is my mother's brother, younger brother was learning painting at Shanti Niketan when Tagore had established it. Mm. And then after my father died. Uh, my mother was very, very upset and all that. Uh, so just to give her calmness and all those things, Shantini Ketan people only suggested to my uncle that uh, bring your sister and the child over here and you have a bungalow here. Sufficient money was there with us. So Madhuri Shet. So then uh, we shifted to Shantini Ketan. So that, uh, as a child, I roamed about in Shantini Ketan. I had the most beautiful childhood because I saw what is Rabindra Shomit. I speak Bangla very fluently still. And uh, I was I was nurtured on Rabindra Shangeet and in Shanti Niketan you had so much of dance, music, theatre. I mean, it was a beautiful place in those days. And when when, when you when, when you stayed in Shanti Niketan, which years it was approximately? I was I was young, uh, like it's about. I must have lived there for two and a half years or something, and uh, I came away over here in fifties or in no, no 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 not fifties. I was I'm seventy six years old now. So it was, it was in, I think, uh, 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 yes, I remember, at, almost at the end of uh, World War, 42-ish. Mm-hmm. So you remember that Shantini I, I remember that, that Shantini because it was, there was, <clears throat> there was a big rumor that uh, the Japanese people are coming through uh, uh, this uh, Burma. Into they will pour into the uh, into India through that Bengal because that time India was not divided, na? So they, they would come and uh, my grandmother was very worried that if they come here it's much better that we they are sort of you know go back to Mumbai. We used to call it Bombay. So let's go back to Bombay if the Japs come here. But it it did not happen. But there was a big scare and people were running around. And then of course after that we had these terrible riots. And then in forty seven the country was divided. I remember the this. Issue. Forty two ish and all that, uh, forty two, forty three. So but when the world war ended, but then we did not, uh, we, we did not come back over here, if I remember. And then we came here, and then afterwards, it's a very, very sad thing that the, our country was divided into two. But about Sanjay Niketan, how do you remember this oh, time and this spirit? I have got a very sharp memory, mm-hmm. an extremely sharp memory. Did you learn uh, Rabindra Nritya, Rabindra no, Shangit? there is no Rabindra Nritya, but Rabindra Shangit. No, but they used to, you know, it was compulsory, you know, you had Sangeet Shala there. So that Sangeet Shala, people people used to go and learn singing and uh, they had to learn Rabindra Shangit. And I used to loiter around everywhere. There was nothing not to get scared at all. And my mother had kept one old Shantal man who would always go with me wherever I went. And I used to sit outside that uh, Sangeet Shala and all that and listen to the music and sing myself. Mm-hmm. I would come home and tell my mother, this is what they were singing. Which uh, my sharp memory and my total uh, understanding of Bangla, mm-hmm. I could sing those songs. So, and then so much in dance, music, it's a, it was a beautiful thing. Painting, of course, for painting, Shanti Niketan was famous. And they used to do this Alpana. Alpana would be, uh, I mean, bigger than this room. And so many ladies sitting there and doing that. I learned how to do Alpana. I would also go there. And since I was very good at it, my mother would go and help there. So she was allowed to take me and some little little things on the fringes I would do like this. So I know in my house, usually I, I used to do Alpana. I didn't do this powder uh, rangoli. But a lot of uh, Bengal influence is there on our family. A lot of uh, Bengal influence. And then of course, uh, started learning dance and all that just a different matter but the, a family which loved arts but high art for instance my mother would say that you know, I, I learned Kathakali I mean it was the rarest possible thing and people were shocked but uh, in, in the school when uh, uh, the teachers asked that you know they would do folk dances you know folk dances naturally the, all the girls can take part 
my mother had warned the, the teacher, my daughter will not learn uh, folk dance because then she will ruin her Kathakali. So that's what our family was. But how you came to Kathakali? What is the story of That was an accident. Kathakali? That was an accident because uh, this very, very fine Kathakali dancer, Raghavan Nair. Now my uncle and his uh, friends, all, all of them had uh, learnt at Shanti Niketan. Then all came back to uh, Mumbai and they said we should have a very nice uh, cultural organization. They called it Seven Arts. The Seven Arts means dance, music, theatre, painting and uh, leather work. Something like all, what, seven, I don't remember what Seven Arts, but it was Seven Arts that they were uh, promoting. They had a nice uh, flat where people were working and they were training and uh, they did a lot of things. And for dancing, they said, let's make a Kathakali artist. I don't know why this to chose, don't ask me all those questions. How old was you then? Five and a half. Five and a half, six-ish. So they, they brought uh, they, they brought this Raghavan Nair. Nobody wanted to learn Kathakali. And he could not speak a word of anything else but Malayalam. And then Kathakali was supposed to be a Rakshasa dance. So how can anyone learn? So now he said that I am not a beggar. I have come here to work. You give me students and then pay me my money. I don't want to. I will not take money just like that. So in desperation they didn't want him to go away. So my, my uncle's friend, he said that this, this girl, so all the time doing like this, like this, let her learn dance. And my uncle said, but because he was scared of his mother, that is my mother's mother, when I was being brought up. My, my grandmother was a very, very strict person and she just adored me. So uh, my uncle said, Let me, let's not tell anybody in the house. So I, I, I learned Kathakali, I, I was if that was an accident. I started learning Kathakali, then when my grandmother came to know that I am learning Kathakali, she started screaming. And she told my mother, you are an idiot, you are an idiot, what is this? This girl can do graceful Manipuri, I don't mind, what is this Kathakali? I was the only one in the whole family who could answer back my grandmother. My grandmother was very hot tempered, very strict and hot tempered. I said, who are you to tell me what I should dance? You shut up, don't tell me anything. I will learn this because I love it. Then she said, if you love it, dance it. So I went deep into Kathakali. I think I was, I am I'm the best Kathakali woman dancer. After me, no one has, no one has taken to Kathakali like I have taken. But I am the greatest woman. Brinali Nisara Bhaya, she also did Kathakali, no? Not exactly? Nothing, nothing like in our line. A little bit she did. But not she much. Bhatnatyam, she was a very mm -hmm. beautiful Bhatnatyam dancer learned from Bandhanalu. So that is a Vinakshi Sundaram Pillai student. Mm -hmm. They are not serious Kathakali dancers. Mm -hmm. I, I made my name as a Kathakali dancer. Today also remember, the people remember my rendition. Then I got married, I grew up, I did law and everything. And then this lady who was employed in Kalamandala, I, I had my son also. I went and studied law in England also, international law. I stood first there. And then this lady came from Kalamandalam in search of greener pastures. And uh, the local Malayalis in Mumbai, they said that you have always supported Kerala and Malayalam, Malayalis and all that. But this lady has come, she is badly made of some work. But naturally, she's not, she doesn't want to beg or anything. Will you learn some Mohini Atam? I said, hey, I'm a Kathakali artist. What, what Mohini Atam? But I remember having seen it now. My mother keeps on, mother kept, kept on telling me. I said, Mommy, I saw Mohini Atam in Shati Nikati. Who says, what lady with a bun here and white costume? She said, no, that was not Mohini Atam. Anyway, but I have some, some image in front of my eyes. My mother must have known better than I, but th that was the case. Uh, so I said, hey, what will I do? And I said, the lady is in badly need of money. I can't put some uh, couple of hundred of rupees and give her an envelope. That is very bad. You cannot do. Come and teach me. And I'll give you. I'll give you whatever it is per turn. I'll give. And I gave her very handsomely. So she came to my house. She could not speak Hindi or anything. But I understood Malayalam. So we conversed and all that. She taught me. I, the first item that I learned was Cholkat. And I, something happened to my body. I said, this is the way my body needs to dance. But what she taught me was not scientific. I said, what is the position? What do I do? This, that. She said, this is how it is. It is there are hardly three and a half to four dances remembered in Kalamandala. I'll teach you all that. Beyond that, I know nothing. By that time, I was deeply in love with Mohini Atta. Mm -hmm. I said, this is what my body revels in and I want to dance this only. Then I started asking, why only, why only four items? Then I got a grant from the Ford Foundation. I have been very fortunate that way. At right time, right people have given me grants. So I went to Kerala and I saw it and I said, but this, I love this art. I did a lot of research. Now that's a very long story. 
and the sum total is that I got identified with Kalamandala. In Kerala, to which place did you went? Yeah, I had to go to Kalamandala. I had to go, and I travelled so much. And there in Kerala, I when I got the Ford Foundation grant and all that, we went and we made films. We shot. There were three old ladies. I have made those films, and after screening those films and analyzing those films in the light of Natya Shastri tradition and all that, I have recreated Mohini Atta. Sangeet Natak Academy doesn't have this record, and Kala Mandalam does not have this record. It's only Nalanda which has this record. They were asking. The ladies, uh, they are traditional they were, they were, dancers. Traditional. They were old. They were the uh, top Mohini Atta performers. What was the names of these ladies? One, one was Nyukuti uh, Amma, second was Chenna Mumbai, third was Kalani. All that is written in my book. Mm -hmm. So you recorded the dance and you recorded these recorded sentences. And, yeah, and then I started recreating. Then, and then of course, Kavalam Panikar and I we did so many things. Kavalam Panikar initially worked with Bharati Shivaji, and they fell off because uh, I mean Kavalam is a is a brilliant man, but he's got his own standards, and he could not. I don't know what happened, and I told him I said uh, I am not interested in doing your your sort of quarrel with Bharati or anything. If you like, I mean, I I would love to work with you. And he said, I would love to work with you. So our collaboration is from eighty three, eighty four. Now we don't work too much uh, together because he's very old now. He's eighty seven. Mm -hmm. So he 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 had, he had he had some health problems. His full that. name is uh, Kavalam Narayan Parikar. And he stays actually in Kerala in the uh, Trivandrum. In Trivandrum. So he's a very very great uh, Kerala poet. He's a very great art uh, art personality of uh, Kerala. But we have worked together, and uh, more than Bharati. Even Bharati is to Bharati, and he fell off. But uh, his work is always reflected with me. They say Kavala and Kanakrele they have worked together. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, he he has got his own very uh, very sort of you know very die hard uh, uh, beliefs and opinions, and I agree with him hundred percent. But I also want to do my other things. So he said that only this sort of a thing and only this sopana sangeetam, and you cannot do this and that. I have studied the whole thing very deeply. See, my plus point is that I know Kathakali in and out, and Kathakali also uses sopana sangeetam. And you know, the others don't know how to do the hand gestures. Others has the lakshana deepika. Others have not learned, and I had to learn it. I had to learn by heart the whole thing. I could walk it out even today uh, because that is Kathakali, and all the Kerala uh, performing arts use this particular text for hand gestures. What was the most impressive and uh, important for you in Kathakali when you started learning this style? Oh, you don't ask me all those questions. I don't know. I don't. Know. I just loved it. That's all that I did. Today also, if I see Kathakali, I get transported somewhere. I don't know where. It's a it's a heavenly art. That's all that I can tell. And uh, Kathakali and Mohini Atam, this shift from Kathakali. Do yeah, you Kathakali, feel it? Kathakali and Mohini Atam. See, Kathakali basically is uh, male oriented. So after a certain point, you can't perform it. And Kathakali is a composite art, so that I must have three, four other dancers with me in, a, in order to be uh, uh, successful. It is not a solo art. Mohini Atam is a solo art. And uh, I, I after a while, it was very expensive to bring bring the troupe from there again and again. The other thing is that I also wanted to branch out as a soloist. I wanted to choreograph. I'm, I'm a superb choreographer. I mean, I've got the uh, national award of the, being the best choreographer from the president of India. So I wanted to do my things, and my mind doesn't accept anybody who does anything to Kathakali. I don't like it. Kathakali has to be intact as it was done. I could exercise my uh, creativity and also my tremendous knowledge of the Natya Shastra and that tradition. I could make it uh, make a good use of it in Mohini Atta. Kathakali has got a superb shastra. I don't want anyone to touch it. But I I created the shastra for Mohini Atta. That's my 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 privilege and pleasure today. Mm -hmm. That's why they have given me the Sangeet Natak Academy fellowship. I mean that's the highest award that one artist can aspire for in India. Mm -hmm. So I've got that fellowship. And for for me to get fellowship in an art which is of Kerala is unheard of. And that is what it is that I got the fellowship for my contribution to Mohini Art. That, for that you, is the best possible. Mm -hmm. For you, what does it mean tradition in the Kathakali in and in, in Mohini Art? The tradition. What is your perception of tradition in this? Uh... Uh, Kathakali is a tradition which uh, say it's it's a it's a it's a practice which is uh, three hundred years old. Three hundred years old uh, that ago. Even then, it has undergone changes, uh, additions, subtractions, 
changes in the costuming and all that. But the actual grammar remains the same. And its aesthetics, aesthetic impact remains the same. You know, it's very simple, victory of good over evil. So that you have the titans and you have the gods, you know, asuras and devas and all those things. So the whole thing is, it's a composite art and uh, I think it's, in certain respects, it's the most perfect art. It's very perfect. But one has to have other dancers with one uh, oneself. And there are certain places where you feel that, oh, because... Uh, Kathakali specializes only uh, a man can dance and female roles are also enacted by men. Now my guru was the ace in that. So <clears throat> his style, he was called Panchali Karunakar Parikar because he, he used to do Panchali's role so beautifully that people used to sob when he did Panchali. Now that is the tradition I got. But beyond that, when I want to do something more creative with myself and I was attracted very much towards Natya Shastra. And <clears throat> also there is one text in Kerala, Balarama Bharatam. I am I'm an expert on that. They say, if you want to know anything about Balaram Bharatam, go to Kanakveli. She knows it. My, my students here in the college learn Balaram Bharatam. They don't have that in Kalamandalam. So that Balaram Bharatam is such an exquisite text and how much you can learn from it. I wanted to implement it. But that implementation ca can come only in Kerala arts because he was the Maharaja of Travel Corps. Kartika Tirunal Balarama Bharatam. A very, very great ruler. Very great ruler enlightened, cultured, himself a poet and all that. So that is that is the great tradition. And I I'm, I'm still I get so attracted to Balaram Bharata. There are there are certain things every now and then after a year, after a couple of years, I just take up one chapter of Balaram Bharata and start analyzing, oh my God, this is there and I, I can use it so effectively for Mohini Atam and nobody will say no to me. But they say yes, that is it. This is Kerala art and this is Kerala text. So I'm not going outside the Kerala uh, ambit. But tradition has to be there. Tradition has to be there right from the way you stand, the way you talk, the way you hold your body, the, the entire dictionary of, dictionary of hand gestures. And then the grammar has to be spelt out. The, the movements of the eyes, eyebrows, cheek, name, uh, this, uh, nose, cheeks. Now that's given in the Natya Shastra. You have it because my students, we teach them all the time that. But, but there are variations. So there is there is one, one tradition which Natya Shastra prescribes. After that, each region has taken whatever it can suitable to its own ethos. <clears throat> so that's how Marga and Deshi comes. So what I have put forward is that Marga, Marga is the high path which you have to tread but which is actually invisible. It's a it's, it's desired way to go. But it's not always able to sort of follow that path. <clears throat> The, re the regions have, in our country, it's not a country, it's a continent, subcontinent. So each region has its own ethos. So whatever is suitable from the Natya Shastra, say Kerala people have taken in their performing arts, theatrical arts, I would say. Then that has become a tradition. So Marga becomes Deshi and then Deshi once again becomes Marga. Because then now it's the absolute grammar which is there. You cannot do this, you have to stand like this only. Mm -hmm. So, so that so, is what it is. <coughs> Margi be become Deshi and Deshi become Margi. So there's correlation. Yeah. This, uh, correlation uh, is there and it is accepted. Uh, I mean, for my, my second edition of my book in Mohini Atam, you better have that book. We are giving concession for that. And Kapila Vatsyan has written the preface, uh, the, the foreword. And she said that you are how correct you are. And <coughs> my PhD was sanctioned, uh, given by her. Because when Bombay University, when I, I did my PhD, that's also on Mohini Atam, they said, Ki, they, uh, who is the greatest scholar in this field today in India, who can evaluate this PhD? And uh, they made inquiries and every, from everywhere, they said, there's only one person, that is Kapila Vatsyan. I was so terrified. My PhD thesis went to her, I said, this, I'm going to be cut. My husband said, why not? She'll ask you to uh, uh, do some corrections, do those corrections. She didn't ask me anything. From that, that day onwards, there's a tremendous bond between us. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. And she said, I believe in what you are doing and I'm so happy about it. Mm -hmm. So I've got, uh, I've got the sanction from experts now, mm -hmm. scholars. Mm -hmm. And all the scholars accept what I'm saying. I've got my own theories and what is the aesthetics of a dance style. I've worked very, very hard at that. But my major contribution is body kinetics in dance. Mm -hmm. that, that is the most major thing. I have worked copyrights. So Kapila says, Kapila has worked, worked with Rudolf, Rudolf Laban and she has worked with Benish also. 
she had she had worked uh, with them in uh, New York, and she said that she's written in the uh, the foreword that Kanak's uh, the theory and graphics are totally different from those theories. She has her own theory, and it's the most uh, valuable theory. I use it for my purposes, for Indian purposes. So, mm. so this this is the way I have worked out. Now, this this was not there again. Even today, they are not doing anything, uh, anything very, I would say very concrete so far as how the body will move. But now they see the way I am moving. They have now started started taking the steps around that I have introduced and all that. And I have gone to the Natya Shastra, Karanas, mm -hmm. analyzing the Karanas. So that they are doing and it's becoming richer. But unfortunately they are not paying much attention to the Shastra side because any student that is taught has to be taught the Shastra also. I wish they would do that. Here we are doing it. But they have got a lot more students there because they are Malayalis. They should introduce the Shastras. They want to, but they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But then the question is that, um, uh, so it's a pan-Indian thing, so yes. Margi. Yeah. It's just a classical idea that belongs to all India. Yes. And then it gets um, um, differentiated in various places, uh, yeah, like that, Kerala that becomes, or whatever. That becomes uh, regional. They it becomes regional. regional. It becomes regional. Yeah. Then the question is about the various, nowadays we have about 10 classical styles. Satriya is there. Satriya, uh, I don't know. What is your idea? How can you comment? I have, no, I, have, can... I, have, I have no no business to comment upon Satriya. I have not studied it. Then why why we have uh, not one but various classical but styles? Yeah, but, but that's because there are so many deshas, so many regions. Tamil Nadu has given uh, Bharatnatyam and Odisha has given Odissi. But that is region. They have a language there. Tamil is a very ancient language. Odissi, Odia language is there, mm -hmm. right? And then Kathak goes into Hindi and uh, uh, this, uh, what is it, Bhojpuri and all that. They go to that and uh, you see, so that, that is Vrindavani. Now that is that is in the north. You go to Manipur, they use Maitri language. Mm -hmm. So that is what it is. But they, uh, they always the language uh, influences the style, classical style, language influence. Very sadly, there is nothing in Maharashtra, nothing in Gujarat. <laughs> I don't know why. That's what it is. And you don't know why? I don't know why. I have not studied that. I only know that there is nothing. But then in Maharashtra, we have got such a solid uh, bhakti literature. And then Dr. Raghavan, I, I was very close to him. And he always said that uh, the bhakti literature took its birth in uh, Tamil Nadu, in Dravida country. Then, then traveling through the Telugu country, that is Andhra, and the Kannada country, that is uh, Karnataka, it found it, its most lasting and the most glorious resting place in Maharashtra. There is nothing to beat Marathi, uh, this uh, spiritual... Uh, like traditional Vidhoba. Vidhoba. Abangas. Vidhoba Abangas. But also in Western Bengal, there is no classical dance style. Huh? In Western Bengal, in Bengal, there is no dance. They say Manipuri is there, so they are talking all sorts of things. They say one of the Chows is ours and all that. I really don't know. Because let the people work on it. But actual classical dance as such, they don't. Chow is a, a, a folk manifestation. Mm -hmm. Just uh, it, it, there is some kind of confusion about there are so many dance styles that it's supposed to be classical. Oh, but a, a form can become a classical, did you say? So what is your idea? What? Uh, any form, some kind of dancing oh, form can, can become please, classical. Can I, can I request you? You will have to read my book for this. Because I have shown what, 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 is the, what constitutes classicism in a particular dance form. You will have to read that. I can't give you a lecture on that. You better purchase the book from the library mm -hmm. and read that entire Martha and Deshi concept. I have, I have written it very extensively and according to the Kapila Vatsyan, she said that this is the this is the most relevant contribution today for the field because then only you will understand what is classicism. Mm -hmm. But what about the spirit of Maharashtra and Gujarat? Uh, there is any kind of, what, what is your feeling there, about... Nobody is uh, trying to do anything. Nobody is trying to do anything. But I, 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 I took the Abhangas, I was the first person in, 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 in here in India. I took the Marathi Abhangas, Nano Bhatu Karam, Eknath Maharaj. I understand Marathi very well. And then by studying the Abhangas and their, their aesthetics and their, their religio-philosophical content and the entire Vitoba cult, Pandarpur cult and all that. Now I, I created a dance drama based on these, uh, these Abhangas. And I researched those Abhangas and then choreographed them 
in Bharatanatyam and Mohini Atta, and that has become world famous. I have taken it to Russia also. ICC has sent us to Russia mm -hmm. when it was USSR. We travel with that, that and other classical dances and all that. So it's, it's Maharashtra matters. Maharashtra matters in uh, in in the, uh, that, the literature. Lit the literature, the literature mm -hmm. part. I set it into music, which is both Carnatic and Hindustani, but the literature part is hundred percent Maharashtra. Uh, what kind of music do you use? Only some Git Sapanam or some other? No, I I use Carnatic and in, uh, I use Carnatic, but I use the ragas which are common to both the systems, Carnatic and Hindustani. Ah, which is your favorite raga? I love everything. I love music. I, I, I have studied the raga aesthetics so that I go according to the mood of the writing and uh, I am lost in all these things. I only thing is that there are, there are, there are times in which, during which you are supposed to sing a particular raga and all that which cannot be maintained into this uh, uh, ambience. Uh, I mean, the, the, your uh, recital, your, your concert starts in the evening at 6 o'clock and you just say that I am not going to re uh, sing the morning raga, that is stupid. You will have to sing. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe in creativity. So yes. the creativity is there. But what about the contemporary dance? I don't like uh, What do you feel? I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Uh, but you also create some new things, some new uh, approaches. I go so on the Natya Shastri tradition. I don't roll on the ground. I don't lie on my stomach and uh, shake my legs in the air. And I don't clutch like this and all that. That is all jungly. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Full stop. You go to the Natya Shastra, there is a definite science and it tells you how to emote. Mm -hmm. It tells you how to use the entire body. It is Sarvanga Abhinaya. Natya Shastra says that especially by Balarama Bharata, the whole body is to you to be used to express. So it is not that contemporary dancers are the only people who clutch their stomach and clutch their breasts and do things. No, mm -hmm. not, it, not at all. Mm -hmm. And even though I have gone abroad and I had the privilege of the fort because I am a Fort Foundation grantee. Nalanda is also grantee. They they sent me, made, they made me possible to go and visit Martha Graham in her studio. And I had long discussions with her. Mm -hmm. I went because she would not allow anyone to use the use a camera. At that time she was very very handicapped. Both her hands were like this. Like in the this. in seventies or something. Did no. you did you visit it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I visited uh, when. So you went 80, 80, 80. That, Because my husband was stationed in New York and he was there for two, three years mm -hmm. on behalf of his band. Mm -hmm. And so I used to go and visit and come back. Mm -hmm. Since I was such a favorite with the Ford Foundation, they immediately made it very possible for me to go and visit this uh, this Alvin Ailey. All these uh, studios I have gone to. And I have sort of sat with them and have uh, had discussions with them. Ah, but what was your feeling after this discussion? What was what, what exactly you discussed? Not all everything they. If Martha tells me, you know, she had done a very uh, new production and all that, and uh, Mary, uh, Mary of the Scots, Queen Mary, and all those things she had done, and then from there uh, she they were rehearsing, and then they were going on a on a on a, a, a British tour. She's in the East New York, but the whole British and European tour she was taking her entire uh, team to. And uh, uh, there, you know, uh, I went there. And then, actually, when Martha, when I was very young, Martha had visited Mumbai, and the government of Maharashtra had asked uh, someone that uh, some some very brilliant young dancer should dance in honor of Martha, and I was selected. And she, I, I said that this was it. She said that I thought that your profile was very very. Uh, familiar to me. I remember she had told me, why don't you come to New York? I'll make, make make it possible for you to stay and learn and everything. I said, I don't want to leave my guru. I don't want to dance your style. I want to learn from my guru. I was not married then. And then she and she talked. Then she they, they were doing something. I just I just sat in one corner and just watched. It was not my business to say anything. I was just soaking up everything. And then she, she used a lot of uh, emotions in her dance. Lot and lot and lot of emotions. But then she says that this is this is very uh, basic for you, isn't it, my dear? Uh, I, I, I could not say anything about it. was so beautiful. You have all this uh, this wisdom, you have it for thousands of years. Why should you bother about this? You have your rasas. She tells me. I was just staring at her. This, this is not very... You have your own way, you have your own grammar. 
what I have tried to do is create my grammar. Mm-hmm. She told me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then in, in those days, New York University had just started a dance department and uh, Stuart Hodes was in charge of the department. He was a very favorite student of Martha Graham. So he invited me when he came to know that I was living in New York, very close to NYU. So he said that, why don't you come and have lunch with me and I will show you my institution. And then he said that, uh, Madam, can you help me to create a course? I said, on what lines? Because you are also teaching them jugglery and you are teaching them acrobatics. That I cannot uh, put down into concrete words. He said, no, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to create a grammar out of Martha's work. So when I went to meet uh, Martha Graham, I had gone twice to her studio. I said that I meet Stuart Holtz. He invited me for lunch. I know he is a very fine person and creative, she said. So I said, but he is creating a grammar. And uh, he said that he is trying to create a grammar actually for your style, as Martha Graham style. She said that uh, I wish uh, he would uh, consult me more about this because nowadays everyone is dancing something and they get up and say, this is Martha Graham. I don't even know these people. Who are they? So she said, of course, I have very, very set ideas about how to dance and all that. And I could see that in her dancing. I could see that in her dancing. It, it, it was concretized and it, it was uh, conventionalized to a certain extent. When you say traditional, it is conventionalized. You must have conventions, which are backed by a very, very long uh, line of experience and there is a touchstone and it has to uh, withstand the vicissitudes of uh, uh, other culture and change in the society. Mm-hmm. It has to stand up as my tradition has to stand up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Martha's tradi- tradition will stand up, let me tell you that. You have your ballet. You have your ballet. ballet I have studied the history of ballet. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I went and uh, I went Maya Pis- I met Maya Pichetskaya when I was on the on a visit. I mean, ICCR had sent me to Moscow and all those places. So I went there. And when I go there, I start. I create a lot of fuss. I said, I want to go to the Bolshoi school. And I went to Kirovsky. I went there. I sat there, and I could see the difference in the two styles. Immediately, it struck me that this is different. This is different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, I like Kirovsky more than Bolshoi. I'm sorry to say that. I like Kirovsky more. So this is the whole thing. I went to so many places. I, I, I went to Denmark and they, they have very good uh, ballet schools. I went to Covent Gardens. Of course I would go there. In, in, uh, uh, and there also at, uh, uh, you know, this uh, in New York, I went to Martha Graham, mm-hmm. Alvin Ely, Tom Walter. All these people were there. So I have seen a lot and then when I went to Southeast Asia, I went to Bali and all those places, I saw that. Of course, that is extension of Indian tradition. There is nothing nothing new that, that I could not say. They also stand, dance Anuman and Sita and all that, calling them something else. So traditions are there and I am very proud of my tradition because 2500 years old, it is it is it is withstood all the attacks and it's there, it's there and pure and beautiful. Nowadays people use some kind of uh, today's matters like deforestation of land uh, or some social issues or some medical. Why not? So do you believe in this? Yes, why not? Mm-hmm. Use this idiom. The Bharata idiot. says that which is, it's, I mean I know these shlokas by heart. He says that that which is, which, which expresses what is Natya. Natya includes, includes dance and that, that it is Natya which, which represents the joys and sorrows of ordinary human beings by way of the four apinayas that is not then he has given you the wide wide spectrum mm-hmm. I, I still feel you read my book because I have done so much of work on women's issues in Mohini Art. but then it's Kavala who writes for me because there is no, no traditional literature there but we follow to the format of songs and all that and we take pure Sopana Sangeetam but I write this manuscript and everything, I script it and then he puts it in uh, in beautiful poetry words. But that's what we have done. Mm-hmm. So that is how traditions can, can yes. be extended yes. Yes. somehow. Yes.